Hey folks, today we're crossing off four things off of our list on Project Dale. Now the first of those four things that we were going to do was put the sound deadener down on the floor on Dale here. As you can see, we've got that done and we've got all the holes cut out and ready to put our vinyl floor back in. Now the reason why I didn't film putting this flooring down was because I've already shown that on the Chrysler Cordoba. So if you want to see that video, then I'm going to put the link right here. You guys can go back and watch how I did that. So now what we've got to do is get the flooring out of the box and start fitting it in place and cutting holes out for our bolts on the seat. Well, that was a little bit of a struggle getting that out of the box. And one of the first things it says to do on the little tag up front is A, it directs you on where the front of the mat is and B, to take it out of the box at least 48 hours before you do the installation, which we don't have. I mean, we do, but we want to get it done today. And the other thing is not to install it in direct sunlight so the reason why you don't want to install it in direct sunlight is because the vinyl can get too hot and can very easily poke a hole in it. Uh, and the reason why you want to lay it out 24 hours at room temperature, or at least I think it says 75 degrees, is you want it to be a little bit pliable and you want it to fit and conform the shape of the floor. It is already kind of formed that way, but when it's all folded up into a box, uh, you're going to get wrinkles in it. Kind of like this one right here. Now this is all stretched out for the hump right here where the seat goes and then it is shaped in the middle for your transmission tunnel. Now a couple of little extra tidbits is it does also come with the underlay or the sound deadener. So we're basically doubling up on our sound deadening properties with the Dynamat product on the floor as well as this sound deadener and it even comes with the grommet for your headlight dimmer. And one thing that I do remember from past experiences is getting that hole cut properly so that it kind of tucks in to the little groove on the inside without showing. So we'll deal with that when the time comes. But for now, we're going to crank the heat in the garage, go inside, take a break, and we'll come out here in a couple of hours and finish installing that floor. So we've had this carpet sitting underneath the heat lamp now for quite a while and the wrinkles are starting to move a little bit. I've also been out here with this old hair dryer that I use on different projects uh, trying to get things more pliable so that it can uh, you know, conform to the floor. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to take this, set it inside the truck and apply more heat. least six inches more than we need. This section right here that's folded up is meant to wrap around the corner here on the hump on the floor. So we've got a little bit more work to do. We'll get the heat in here and uh, start stretching this thing out. So the fact that I can't get the garage up above 61 or 2 degrees today is playing havoc on my plans to get the interior put back together on Dale. So we've got the vinyl flooring sitting back underneath the heat lamp. We've also got a small little space heater kind of up underneath of it. Hopefully by later on this evening we'll have this pliable enough that we can actually get it back in. So that gives us some time to get the insulation glued down to the floor. So I'm going to grab that and I'll show you how that's done. So basically all we're doing is we're taking some 3M super glue and we are going to spray both the back side of the insulation as well as the floor. Let it tack up a bit and stick it down. It's basically a contact cement so there's nothing much to it. Let's go ahead and start spraying. So 
So one thing you will want to keep in mind is unlike what I did, you'll want to start in the center of the vehicle. That way you know you've got the equal amount of space between the edge of the underlay and the post. Unlike over here, I've got two or three inches over there and I've only got about an inch and a half or so over here. No big deal, uh, but it all fits in there. Nice and neat. I did have to trim around the headlight dimmer switch, but other than that, no trimming necessary. So now all we're doing is we're waiting for this to warm up again and we can get that installed. So we will keep waiting. In the meantime, I'm going to uh, have a refreshing beverage. So that floor covering seems like it's pretty flexible now. We're gonna try and get it installed one more time. Well, I think now that we've got it in here, it is starting to fit in just almost a little bit. So in places like up over the transmission tunnel and around this little hump where the seats are, we're probably gonna have to take a heat gun and help that uh, or speed that process up of getting this thing flexible. So I'll bring the heat gun home from work tomorrow night and we will continue on this project. Um, Obviously the goal was to get the floor covering down, the seats in and the doors on in this video. Obviously that didn't happen. So that'll be the next video. But we still managed to get a few things crossed off the list. So the first one was patch the hole in the floor. So if you guys remember, right about here, there was a small little pinhole in the floor and last night I came out here and I cut that out. I welded a new piece in and I seam sealed it that way today it would be ready for me to put the floor covering down. So we can cross that one off the list. The fender bolt uh, down in the bottom, the lower fender bolt, I did get that in today as well. Uh, obviously we got the sound deadener and the underlay down there. There's a couple of things off the list as well. One of the things that I did while I was waiting for this thing to soften up was I did a quick video and I'm gonna put that video right here and that is how to remove the body side trim on these on this style uh, Chevy or GMC C10 and the reason why was because I had a I had somebody reach out to me on Instagram and asking me how to take it apart and that got me thinking let's go see if I can find a video I'll just send in the link well I couldn't even find a video on these trims so I decided to make my own and uh, we got that accomplished today as well. So I'm going to go inside, get this video edited up for you guys to watch today, which is Tuesday. And uh, then on Thursday's video, hopefully we can have this buttoned up and the seats in, the doors on. And by then, we may even have the parts necessary to get those spring shackles lowered a little bit and uh, to get the box back on the truck. And then Dale will be, well road legal uh, we are getting ready to do a motor swap or not a motor swap we're going to do a motor refresh uh, and build that as well as i did end up picking up a 700r4 transmission to go up with it and we'll be getting that built as well so guys this thursday the car guy and six fan show will be hosting dan courier from creator fundamentals and dan is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to boosting your youtube channel uh, he's helped Grant and I along the way a uh, considerable amount. He's going to be here to help answer some questions for us as well as any of those YouTube uh, creators who are in our chat each and every Thursday at 7 o'clock Central, 8 Eastern, and 9 local time. Old Car Auto Guy t-shirts and hoodies and swag is available the first link in the description box below. Hope you can go over there and get some of your own swag as well as support the channel in just another fashion. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again in the next video.